and welcome to Citizens Forum. This show is being filmed on Tuesday, August the 18th in the Memorial Arena in Victoria, BC. I'd like to start by thanking the volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every week. The first part of Citizens Forum is always the Walt and Jack show, but today we're joined by uh, Mehdi Najari, and we're going to be talking mostly about the federal election. I thought it's important to talk about the debates because the Harper is changing. He not only is changing Canada, now he's changing our ele election uh, tradition. We used, used to have a debate with the consortium of the television consortiums, and now Harper refused to participate in that in English language debate. So he he's trying to get, in my opinion, getting people that are supporters of Harper to do the debate. For example, with the McLean, the first debate McLean, Mr. Uh, Paul Wells was, was his biographer. Paul, who was Paul Wells? He was, was the, was the pe person in charge of the debate. He was the moderator? Moderator, oh, okay. yes. And he is also Mr. Harper's biographer. Biographer. And he praised Harper after the, after the debate in, in the interview. He did. And uh, with uh, another, another uh, group that are going to do the, the, the debate on economy is Globe and Mail. And Globe and Mail is the company that supported and endorsed Harper in the last three elections. This is their boy, you know, and Harper only wants to have the people that support him to do the debate so he can have advantage. The same with the Monk debate. Monk is a, is a right-wing uh, Zionist entity, is, is, is funded by Peter Monk of uh, Barrett Gold, is a big corporate support an entity, and they want to do the, uh, the foreign policy debate. So Monk, we are, we are going to see our foreign policy through the, the lens of, of Monk views. Of you know? Barrett, well, and Barrett Gold is kind of, um, I mean, aren't, aren't they investigated around the world for they criminal are, they actions? They are devastating a lot of land areas that they are mining in third world country, in, in South America, in Africa, and so on and so forth. But the m most important is that the foreign policy is going to be filtered through the lens of, of monk debate, which is going to be poro right wing, poro Israeli views. And that is why Harper is the most uh, biggest supporter of Israel in the world. And our, the debate on the economy will be focused through the filter of the Globe and Mail, Globe and Mail. which is owned by the Thompson family, Canada's wealthiest family. So, you know, how do we end up uh, as Canadians in this situation where, you know, the corporations control all, our, all, of, our, all of our electoral debates? It, it's... It's... Well, you know, in the debates, the thing is I noticed what was refreshing was they had Elizabeth May in the, the previous debate that you're talking about. And, I mean, she just looked so different than the other three. And she looked competent and relaxed, and she really was on her game. And I don't think they want to see that type of thing happening. So in, in, the, in the Global Mail debate, from what I understand, Elizabeth May is not going to be involved. No, it's in 2008, we should go back to the yeah. background. 2008, Jack Layton and Stephen Harper worked together to, to not allow Elizabeth May participate in debate. We have a big backlash in the public, and that's why Elizabeth May was included, because of the big backlash. In 2011, they were succeeded to keep her out. And again now, in the debate, in, in Monk debate, and also in Globe and Mail debate, Elizabeth May is not invited. They are trying to reduce our, our chances and opportunity to look at other point of view. They want to have this debate between uh, Harper and NDP. And, they want, and we know that these guys work together to destroy Liberal Party. In the last three elections, we, we saw that uh, uh, we saw that uh, lots of Harper advisors actually said that, that they work together, Liberal Party and Conservative, uh, NDP. NDP and Conservative, to destroy Liberal Party. Here is the uh, uh, headlines. Election platform of, uh, of 
election part of long-term Harper strategy to destroy liberals. Former top advisor Tom Flanagan said. Another, another one is, here is McLean from 2006. The secret plot to destroy liberals. And another one in, in uh, which was the uh, Ma um, Lawrence Martin book, uh, Politics of Control. It's quoted Harper advisor Keith Bertley that uh, he said, conservative under Stephen Harper and NDP leader Jack Layton aim to destroy liberals. So they, they work together in the last three election to get rid of, to destroy liberals. And now they want to reduce our chances of, of hearing other alternatives like Green Party. So people have to, I think we should really pay attention to, to, to what's happening. In the, and we see when, the, when we had the debate in McLean debate, they, after the debate, during the coverage of the debate, they bring this so-called expert, the body language expert, Mr. Mark Bodin. And what does he say? Here is what he said. So first of all, look, looking at Stephen Harper, what we saw was good symmetrical language. And the anchor said, prime, prime minister. Yeah, absolutely. If you are looking for that prime minister, you got the symmetrical body language, which they're, they're, they're very still, very ordered in body language. There is... There is it again, completely symmetrical. If you are out there looking, and you are looking for a prime minister, and you may thinking of changing your vote or not changing your vote, this is who you should vote for. In that debate, I mean, this, and then he go attack Elizabeth May as being being muddled, That's right. and attack uh, attack uh, 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 Trudeau of being gesticulating and not trust trustable. But what we, see, what we saw, McLean coverage didn't tell us that Mark Boudin was hired, was a coach for Harper, was hired by Harper team. To so, train him, to teach to, him how to, to use body language. Body language, which is absolute nonsense. If you tell somebody to behave this way, that doesn't mean that's his natural <laughs> behavior. So what, what we see, they are engaged in public deception. They are lying to public. Yeah, the so-called expert is attacking the, the, the three other candidates and putting Harper as a prime ministerial. This is the type of deception we are going to get if we allow corporations conduct our debates. And so, you wouldn't be concerned uh, if maybe he was coming up with a whole lot of good ideas and good solid points and really driving them home, but the guy lied straight ahead. He used very good... He used great body language while he told a whole pack of lies. So that is like very unsettling that he can pull that off. I really think there should be a complaint to CRTC about what McLean coverage did by bringing that guy and introducing him as a body expert, expert body language, language expert. expert, but not telling the people that he is the coach, coach of Harper. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it was shocking to, to see, uh, this came on shortly after the debate. He praised uh, Stephen Harper and basically criticized everyone else for, for the way they looked on screen. Oh, he was saying that Elizabeth May, you cannot look at her eyes, so you cannot trust her. She's not trustable. That's what, that was his conclusion, you know, it, it, which is absolute nonsense. Uh, you wanted to talk a bit about uh, the situation with veterans. I, I think this issue of the veterans are very important. How many Canadians knows that there have been more veteran suicide than, than the veteran died in Afghanistan? More than 170 veteran suicide. And the reason for these suicides are that they do not get the help they need. They are going, they are asking for help, and they are not getting it. Harper government has cut the budget of the veteran affairs and in last few years they return more than 1.1 billion dollar of the veteran affairs budget that they didn't spend back to the government coffers you know to me it's amazing that this hasn't been a, 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 an issue yet in in the election they, i mean i didn't know that more veterans have committed suicide than were killed in afghanistan and they close about nine nine veteran affairs offices 
and people are saying, uh, you know, for, for example, let, let me tell you about this veteran burial fund. There is a fund for poor veteran when they die, they can use that fund for, for burial. You know, it was $65 million in it. They only spent about eight, 18 million of it and 67% of the requests were denied, you know. So people are not having even a burial for, for the people that fought for this country, you know. And what they do, uh, this psychopathic government is doing, they claim that they increase the budget, but they, don't, but they put condition that the veteran cannot access that money, you know. They, they increase the budget, but the budget is not being expended. So they return the budget. So it's a, it's, a, it's a really sick joke. They are playing with the, with the veteran. Because at the same time, Harper all the time can claim that we raise the budget. Look, the budget is raised. But they are not, they put condition on it that it cannot be used. Yeah, the level of, I don't know, I don't know what word to use, the way our politicians treat all of us is, is it's just a disgrace. Yeah, it's, it's the casual cruelty. Yeah. I mean, people's lives are being destroyed by these decisions. Even the decision, for instance, to send our troops to, uh, to into combat, very questionable grounds for most of it. I always wondered what special skills Stephen Harper had and his cronies to know when it's the proper time to send Canadian soldiers into combat. I don't think they have those, the, the right background. And covering up the suicide. For example, yeah. when Corporal Stuart Landridge committed suicide, he left a note for his mother. His mother lives here in Victoria, actually. The, the DND kept that note for 14 months. You know, his wishes was to have a simple burial. And that was not related to his mother. You know? And this, this is the type of you know, craziness that we see in this government, you know, and they don't care. They don't care the, uh, the, the veteran commits suicide and they are getting away with it. Um, and I mean, this basically ties into what the next thing you wanted to talk about, which is the corruption in our government. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Harper talk about uh, uh, Trudeau is not ready because this is a very important job and people with experience need to do it. But let's look at Mr. Harper when he was in office, what kind of decision he made. For example, one of his, his the top advisor he chose was Bruce Carson. And Bruce Carson saying that he told Harper that he had criminal conviction in 80s and 90s. He had five fraud, uh, fraud conviction. But Harper, because he could help Harper to get uh, where what Harper wanted, Harper hired him as his advisors. And then he was again, uh, was prosecuted for, for lobbying, for improper lobbying in 2011. So that's why we know that that happened. Another person was Arthur Porter. Dr. Arthur Porter was selected by Harper to be as a, as a head of the CERC the entity that looking at spy agencies. Right, the know, oversight over, of Overseers, and he was the head man, you yeah. mean head of the board, yeah. that look at the, uh, the, the, the CSIS. And he had, he had very troubling past. Wasn't and he involved with a fraud, building a hospital in Building in hospital in Montreal, and also he, before that, in Detroit, he was engaging in very criminal activity, again, they sent a letter to the Harper. Here is the head headings. Letter warning Stephen Harper against appointing Arthur Porter to oversee a spy agency raised no red flag. He just ignored it. Who sent him the letter? If, if from uh, from uh, uh, other officials that you know that knew about his background, right. Porter background. I mean to 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 put the oversight of CSIS in the hands of somebody who's later convicted of fraud in building a hospital and taking money away from the hospital and you know I mean it's absolutely and yet 
and he was in fraudulent uh, behavior in past, not just yeah. uh, after, you know. So it, it is, it is an, uh, another interesting. But there was others. Nathan J. Jacobson. This guy was a fugitive from justice in U.S., but suddenly, and they wanted him, and they arrested him later, but he was a close, uh, very close to Harper government. There is a picture of Nathan Jacobson in the middle, and one side of him is Harper, the other side is, is Benjamin Netanyahu. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't get any higher than that. Yeah. But they suddenly drop all the charges because of his relation with Mossad. There is another guy by the name of Sali Zejdal. He was an alderman in Montreal, and at, at the same time, he was a close advisor to Harper, his, uh, his senior advisor for Quebec. He was convicted of, of fraud, convicted of corruption, breach of trust, and fraud. And, you know, Harper advisor. Another one, Dil, Dil, Dean Del Mastro. He was the parliamentary secretary for Harper, and he's a spokesperson on ethics. He was put in shackle and sent to jail for, for, for cheating during the election and lying about it. Peter Panaccio, he was the Harper MP from Labrador that, that was, you know, convicted of doing wrong during the election. It, uh, even Mike Duffy, we have Pamela Wallen, we have Patrick Brazo. Patrick Brazo was put in Senate by Harper because he was used whenever there was talk about, uh, about uh, natives, to use it against natives. So there is so many, so many, and nobody talk about that. The corporate media doesn't talk about it, and we have to ask ourselves why. Many, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.